A new study drops showing one exercise is way better than another, and suddenly everyone's completely overhauling their programs. Here's why you might be overreacting. Early research is often designed to maximize the chance of finding effects that may be worth pursuing in future studies. Often these studies are designed to create the most extreme comparisons possible, like comparing one set versus 20 sets, or testing two completely different exercises in isolation with zero other training. Take the well-known and extremely well-done hamstring studies by Mayo and colleagues. They completed seated versus lying hamstring curls in trained individuals. When reviewing the results at face value, the seated hamstring curl seems to be a decent bit better for hamstrings growth and probably because they expose the muscle to attention at longer lengths. But here's the catch. In the real world, you're probably doing RDLs or other hip hinge movements that challenge the length and position of the hamstrings. This change may completely alter the magnitude of the effect. The important thing here is that early studies will often set the ceiling for best case effects. These studies are often designed in an effort to detect any potential signal, initially leveraging internal versus as external validity. As research matures in a given area and the training approaches we're comparing start to largely overlap, the dramatic effects tend to shrink towards more realistic expectations. This is a normal and expected cycle that shouldn't discourage you from leveraging the advantages of the scientific process. Keep a level head when interpreting your research and be sure to follow along for more training insights without the hype.